Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, Hirini Mazisu, Pax Wobiskam. Peace be unto you. Welcome to 1 Samuel chapter 15. There are 35 verses. Beginning in verse 3, we have an omission in the Masoretic text. It is, uh, and Hirim. So the question is, is Hirim a person or a people? Well, the answer is neither. It is Hebrew for uh, he destroyed. He destroyed is what it means. So let's read it, uh, translating it. Smite Amalek, uh, now go and you shall smite Amalek and, and destroy or to destroy all that belongs to him. Utterly destroy. So it, it is uh, translated in the Masoretic as such. A significant difference in the same verse. It says here, You shall not save anything of him alive. So that was omitted, that instruction. That gives us a, a very explicit commandment. It's not just don't spare them. It says don't save anything alive at all, all across the board. Another omission is another statement, another instruction. You shall devote him, talking about Amalek, to, sorry, you shall devote him and all his to destruction, which that was inserted, but that is what is implied. So there's nothing regarding that, that anything is devoted to being destroyed in the Masoretic. In verse 4, we see Gilgal being mentioned. In the Masoretic, it's not Gilgal, but Telaim. We have a discrepancy as well of 400,000 regular troops in the Septuagint, while we have 200,000, half as many, in the Masoretic. In regards to Judah's troops, there are 30,000 in the Septuagint, and only a third of that number, 10,000 in the Masoretic. Continuing on in, in verse 5, cities of Adam, Amalek versus city. Verse 6, Kenite or Kenite versus the Kenites. So it means the same thing. So I'm not sure why I brought that one up. Verse 8, we have an omission of Hirim, which uh, so he slew all the people and destroyed with the edge of the sword. Uh, well, that wasn't really omitted. Okay, well, in actual fact, it was included. So I correct myself there. Verse 9, we see a mention of fruits and vineyards. Fruits and vineyards. Fruits uh, and of the fruits and of the vineyards. Versus the fatlings and lambs. So not exactly vegan there. Verse 12, the whole verse is different. So we're going to read... I'm going to read it in full, and it's a big difference, by the way. Let's read in the Septuagint first. And Samuel rose early and went to meet Israel in the morning. And before I read the full verse, uh, both translations seem to be confused in regards to who is who, who is being referred to who, uh, in, in either one, Septuagint or Masoretic. So... The footnote in my Brenton Septuagint says that the Hebrew and the Alexandrian text uh, notes Saul is Samuel and Samuel is Saul, at least in the first half of this verse, which makes more sense. It gives sense to the verse. Otherwise, it is nonsense in the Septuagint and even greater nonsense, as you will find out in the Masoretic. So let's read it according to that understanding now. So, again, Samuel is Saul, Saul is Samuel. So, and Saul rose early and went to meet Israel in the morning. The, the people of Israel, his, uh, those under him, under his authority. And it was told Samuel, saying, Saul has come to Carmel, and he has raised up help for himself. And he, meaning Samuel, turned his chariot 
and came down to Gilgal to Saul. So this is where the names are normalized again at this point of the narrative. And behold, he, Saul, was offering up a whole burnt offering to Adonai, the chief of the spoils which he brought out of Amalek. Uh, verse 12 in the Masoretic now. And we're going to go with that same understanding. And when Samuel ro rose early, so and when Saul rose early to meet uh, Samuel in the morning, which doesn't make sense because uh, Samuel's the one uh, reacting to what is happening. How can he react to him meeting Saul? It was told Samuel, say, so this word the first normalizes at this point. It was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Carmel and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. Okay. Uh, so the omission, so it, it makes less sense <laughs> in the Masoretic, as you can see. There's an omission in this verse of Samuel turned his chariot to meet Saul. And there's another omission of the fact that uh, Saul was offering up whole burnt offering to Adonai, uh, specifically the chief of the spoils, which he brought out of Amalek. Verse 13, all that Adonai said, so this is... Uh, Saul defending himself saying I have performed all that Adonai has said versus I have performed the commandment of Adonai so uh, we can see he's really justifying himself in the Septuagint he's saying I did all he didn't clearly verse 15 I I have brought them out versus uh, we or I should say they have brought them And there's another, okay, is it we or they? Okay, actually there is both. Both of, the, both of those differences, uh, we have that at the end, what I just mentioned. The I and the we, that's at the end. Uh, but there is an I and a they, so I, I seem to have missed that one. So I and we at the end, it says, I utterly destroyed uh, versus we. So the people of Israel, along with Saul, destroyed uh, the sheep and the cattle so he's justifying we're going to destroy it but we're not just going to waste it we're going to use it as a sacrifice which seems sort of reasonable but that was not the explicit instruction so he's trying to use a loophole here to <laughs> he's using a loophole let's just leave it at that verse 17 we have a big difference a significant difference uh, Samuel saying to Saul are you not little in his eyes? Talking about Adonai's eyes. Uh, versus, were you, when you were little in your own eyes, which doesn't make sense. So it makes more sense that uh, Saul, who is a, a tall individual, head and shoulders above everyone else, uh, are you not little in the sight of Adonai, even though you're tall, essentially. But when you were little in his sight that doesn't make sense what is what is he trying to say here in the Masoretic verse 18 there's an omission of the sinners uh, against me uh, specifically against me so you shall slay the sinners that sinned against Adonai not just sinners in general so we can see the sin was against Adonai uh, so the Amalekites sinned against Adonai which is interesting how can they sin against him well Apparently they did. That's what is being uh, expressed here. In verse 20, we have a, a huge difference. It says the people, or I should say Saul, explaining that I listened to the voice of the people. Because the question was, why did, you, uh, why did you do what was evil in the sight of Adonai? And Saul said, because I listened to the voice of the people. He just... He came straight out with it. He he just said it. He told it like it is. This is what happened. I, I listened to the voice of the people. He confessed that he did wrong. Okay, so he seems to be a much more relatable individual, r relatable character in this account of the Septuagint. However, in the Masoretic, Saul just seems like a stubborn, uh, 
man set in his ways justifying you know everything he did and making ex- excuses so the question in the Masoretic is the same uh, why did you not obey Adonai his answer in the Masoretic I have obeyed the voice of Adonai he just sounds like a, an angsty teenager there doesn't he but that's not the case in the Septuagint he isn't trying to defend himself he's saying he's just telling it like it is he, he confessed I did wrong I listened to the voice of the people Okay, he's not trying to uh, make excuses for himself. There's, a, there's an addition uh, in the Masoretic of utterly in regards to destroyed, and then verse twenty-two. We have the term hearing, uh, hearing the words of Adonai, which implies obeying, because in the Hebraic understanding, it's hearing means to listen and obey. Verse twenty-three, a big difference. Here it says in the Mas- uh, sorry the Septuagint, sin is as divination. Idols bring on pain and grief. Okay, uh, versus rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Okay, so it's expressed quite differently there. Uh, verse 25 Saul is asking uh, Samuel to remove my sin versus simply to pardon my sin. So removing his sin is more uh, complete. Verse 29, is this a prophecy? It says here in the Septuagint, And Israel shall be divided to two, and Elohim will not turn nor repent, for he is not as a man to repent. It makes less sense in the Masoretic, to be honest. It says, and also the strength of Israel, which people could reason that that's Elohim it's describing, will not lie or repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. But it's true that uh, Israel was divided into two. It was not at this point in time, but yes, it was divided into two kingdoms, the the northern part and the southern part, which is a spoiler (laughs) in regards to the content of this channel. Okay, uh, verse 32, this is uh, the king Agag uh, being brought to Samuel. And Agag came to him trembling. So he was afraid for his life versus he came to him delicately, whatever that means. Was he effeminate? I'm not sure what that implies. And a significant difference in the same verse, it says here, uh, Agag making a statement. Is death thus bitter? Or we can render it as, If it be thus bitter, uh, If it be thus, If it's going to be like this, Bitter is death. So that's the footnote in my Septuagint. However, in the Masoretic, uh, It seems that Agag is trying to uh, bargain here. Surely the bitterness of death is past. Why, why do anything? You know, Just let me get away with whatever I did. Maybe I didn't do anything wrong. (laughs) He's trying to get away with, uh, get away scot-free. Verse 33, Samuel tells him the reason of his execution. Agag bereaved women of their children. He killed children. Versus he made women childless, uh, perhaps by a procedure to render them infertile unable to bear children or we could explain it away as he ended the lives of children but it can be interpreted in various ways in the Masoretic in the Septuagint not so it's only that he bereaved women of their children it's it's uh, precise and uh, not really open to interpretation uh, significant difference in the same verse it says Samuel slew Agag So he just offed him, he ended him, versus he hewed Agag in pieces, which is, to be frank, uh, sounds very disturbing. So in the Septuagint, uh, Samuel killed, executed him normally, probably by, you know, on the throat there, just making a cut, an incision there, uh, versus a, I hate to say it, but like a serial killer cutting him up into pieces which is very grotesque so i'm going to leave you with that grotesque (laughs) description 
or just grotesque possibility, which, uh, which is not what we lean towards. We are a channel that uh, uh, we present the Septuagint, and it's not that we have a bias for it. It's because it is what Yeshua used in the New Testament church, and, and it, it doesn't contradict itself. So that's our position here, because truth is truth, and the truth will prevail. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, until next time, I bid you all Shalom Alechem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu, Paxwell Biscom, Peace be unto you and Maranatha.